Hello there, everybody. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, and I'm the founder of the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, creator of No Hassle Newsletters, authors of author of these six books that you can get for free. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that at the end of the show. But today, most importantly, I'm the host of Dream Business Radio now in its 10th year. This is episode 547, and I have an amazing guest today, Dr. Alan Leica. Alan, Dr. Alan, I don't know what to call you. How, how are you doing today? I am fantastic, Captain Jim. I love, I, I love the way you introduced me. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm, I, I haven't even gotten to that yet. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the, um, the high praise that, that you've earned. But um, before we do that, folks, this episode of Dream Business Radio is brought to you by the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program. If you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner who wants to grow a more profitable business faster, and especially, especially if you want to learn how to create multiple streams of revenue in your business, you want to be part of this extraordinary virtual mastermind led by me since 2009. And you can get more information on that at dreambizcoaching.com, dreambizcoaching.com. By the way, my latest ebook is definitely my most popular one. It's called Charge What You're Worth and Work Three Days a Week. You can get a free copy. It's I think it's 26-page PDF download, which tells you exactly how I went from being typical small business owner, having like 20 clients in, in five miles of my, my home office to having clients all over the country and being able to live now and work for the last seven years, only three days a week, and also traveling on my former beautiful boat for five years. You can download that report at work3daysaweek.com, work3daysaweek.com. All right, let me tell you about my very special guest. It's been um, about a month in the making. Dr. Alan Like is a former cosmetic dermatologist, a field that he owned for three decades. He was awarded 16 consecutive Consumer Choice Awards of Excellence in Cosmetic Surgery, a feat no one has done before in that field. He has spoken on podiums around the globe from the USA to Vietnam and from Canada to Berlin. But even more remarkably, Dr. Leica was uh, diagnosed with ALS, as you know, that's Lou Gehrig's disease, in 2003, was given six months to live. He courageously fought that diagnosis and is here today, basically, you know, as a result of courage and determination and having been given a golden ticket or new lease on life, so to speak, his, his life has changed. He sought out the secrets to living a fantastic life. And he wrote a book on that and discovered 13 golden pearls that he used to facilitate positive change in his life. And now positive change as he, as he spreads it around on a personal note, he's happily married for 38 years. He has four wonderful daughters and seven grandchildren. Got me beat by three there counts his family among his most important accomplishments as I do as well. So Dr. Allen, once again, welcome to dream business radio, my friend. Thank you, Captain Jim. That's really good. And one note, I actually have one more grandchild now. So I beat really? you by another one. Man, you got to keep up updating your resume. There. Well, that one just happened before Christmas. So it's it's just gotten in there. So um, we've been traveling sort of around each other, you know, for quite a long time, especially in the marketing world. Um, we connected a few months ago, which was a, a treat for me. Um, you have a very successful um, radio show podcast, which is done very well. And you have a book, How to Live a Fantastic Life, or The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life. I think your radio show is How to Live a Fantastic Life. And now here you are in Dream Business Radio. So this is a real treat for me. Um, I'd like to start out by shedding a little bit of light on your background so people who may not know who you are. You, As I said, you've been a very successful practicing cosmetic dermatologist and going back a few years, you know, you decided to make a change and, and get out of medicine. Can you share a little of your backstory, if you will? Well, you know, the backstory is interesting. I, I was a very successful dermatologist back in 2003. I was at the top of my cosmetic surgery career. I had just brought on tumescent liposuction, which is a way to bring liposuction under local anesthesia. I had pioneered the works of Botox and fillers, you know, things that are done by everybody in this day and age. But, you know, I was one of the first that brought it to where it was. And in 2003, I decided to take a vacation to the happiest place on earth, Disneyland. Oh my goodness. And, and, and there my wife turned to me and she said, what's wrong with you, hon? 
You know, Jim, I was taken aback for once in my life. I hadn't said anything wrong. I hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't even thunk anything wrong. <laughs> but she persisted. What's wrong with you? So I said, dear, what are you talking about? She said, your right foot is flapping. I said, flapping. what do you mean flapping, dear? That, that's the stupidest thing you ever <laughs> said. She said, well, listen to it. And my right foot had suddenly, mysteriously developed a foot drop. It mm. was flapping on the pavement with each step I was taking. You know that audible sound when you go slap, slap, slap. Yep. And, and that was going on. I said, gee, it must be hot out here. It's 90 degrees. It's humid. She said, you know, you can't pull that one by me, dear. I'm a doctor. That's not what's going on here. She said, when we get back, you better get it checked out. Now, Captain Jim, when your significant other gives you that ultimatum, what do you do? It's not a suggestion. That's right. <laughs> it's definitely not a suggestion. And if you know what's good for you, you get it checked out. So I went to my friends who were doctors. They had no idea what was going on. They sent me to other doctors. They sent me to other doctors. And at the end of the day, I'd seen hundreds, maybe thousands of doctors. And they were befuddled. They had mm. done CAT scans. They had done brain scans. I think they even did scan scans. And, and, and you know, it, it, it was frustrating because they couldn't find anything wrong. And you know what doctors do when they can't find anything wrong? More tests. More tests and more tests. They stick needles into every cavity that existed. Stick tubes into every cavity that existed until they get no answer. And again, mm. they couldn't find anything wrong. So they said, okay, we're going to send you to a world-leading neurologist. You know, he's the brain guy. He's got all the answers, right, Jim? So That's he, right. He's got all the answers. So they sent me there, and I walked in, and I said, hi. He said, hi back. You better be sitting down when I tell you this. And I said, mm -hmm. why? He said, you have ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. You better get your affairs in order. Oh, my goodness. I, and I said, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He said, of course, an autopsy. <laughs> That's not good. The guy had the bedside manner of house. And oh, yeah. I, I said, is there a way to prove this diagnosis? He said, yes, an autopsy. Autopsy. That's when you're dead and they're looking for all those pieces. Mm -hmm. So so what do you do? I slammed the door. I walked out, Captain Jim, and I said, I'm not going to die to prove you wrong. So I went through all the phases that Elizabeth Kubler-Ross wrote in her book on death and dying. You know, you go through anger. You're angry at everything. You're angry. I could bite the head off nails. My staff knew I was angry. My patients knew I was angry. My family knew I was angry. But, you know, I didn't want to tell them what was wrong because they might abandon me. Mm -hmm. I went through bargaining. Oh, God, can you please make this go away? I'll do anything if you make this go away. But Captain Jim, I didn't think he was listening. I didn't think he was really figuring it out. Uh, so then you go through denial. Yes. You, know, you know, denials yeah. in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's denying everything, you know, and I denied it. I worked harder and harder and harder. And, you know, my right hand started not functioning either. And I couldn't hold those surgical instruments that I could. Oh, that's not good. And, and you know, I was right-handed, but I became left-handed. Mm. And I started to do things with my left hand my right hand couldn't do. And I became a left-handed surgeon. And back then, that was really phenomenal because all the instruments were invented for right-handed doctors. Oh. So I had to invent left-handed surgical scissors and left-handed cannulas and left-handed everything because they're built exactly 180 degrees different from mm -hmm. what the right-handed ones. But then you go through depression. And Captain Jim, you and I talked. You and I have both been depressed. Isn't that one of the worst things that happens? Most definitely. Yep. 
Being that, down there. That being down there. That's when you can't sleep. That's when you can't eat. That's when you can't do anything. But you know that there's blackness, everything else, and you want to end it all. And I was going to commit suicide because I was going to die from ALS. ALS is a terrible disease where you end up gasping for air and can't do anything. So I decided at that point, before I committed suicide, that I'd go ask my wife. And I said, dear, what do I have? She said, I haven't got the faintest idea, but you're smart. You'll figure it out. And I said, how? She said, perhaps you haven't seen the right doctor yet. Now, back in 2003, mm. something brand new was invented. You might have heard about it. It's called the internet. You hear of that beast, Captain okay. Jim? Yeah. Yep. I'm very familiar with who invented that. <laughs> yeah. But do you remember it back in 2003? Yes, you I mean look at look 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 at the white hair in my face. Of course, well, I do. yeah. Back then, you had to use dial-on connections. You had yep. to put a phone in a cradle that can communicate it with another phone, and if you were lucky enough, after fifteen minutes, you'd get a connection. It would go ria ria ria, and finally, you connect. And and when you connected, you were able to get to the other side. And if you had help, you could get through the internet and find the people that could help you. You know, I was lucky. I had nerds that could help me. And the internet was just like it is now. It was full of garbage cans as long as great books and great resources. And you still can't find tell the garbage cans from the great resources. You need to be a wizard to figure those out because there's so many garbage cans, it's terrible. Well, I found a doctor in Colorado Springs, Colorado. His name was David Martz that had a story very similar to mine. And he got worse much more rapidly than I did. And he was on his deathbed within days of getting his diagnosis. Now, he was so beloved. Everybody was coming up to say goodbye to David. And mm -hmm. a, doctor, a doctor from Texas came up, a doctor, William Harvey. And he looked at David and said, I don't think you have Lou Gehrig's disease. I don't think you have uh, this terrible disease called ALS. David whispered, because that's all he could do. And he said, what do I have? The doctor said, I think you have chronic Lyme's disease. Oh. I think you've been bitten by a tick. And it's mimicking ALS. David said, what do I do? The doctor from Texas said, you need do nothing. All you have to do is start on this treatment. And if I'm right, you'll get better. David said, what do I have to lose? Yes. Uh, I'm dying. So he started him on treatment. And within two weeks, he was like Lazarus arising from the dead. He was back to his usual self. So I knew I had to get in touch with David. So I phoned every hospital in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And I met up with David at the Methodist Hospital. And we talked for hours. And he said, Dr. Leica, can you come down and see me? And I said, when? He said, right now. I said, David, it's Thanksgiving in Canada. My wife's invited 50 people over. You know what he's <laughs> going to do to me? He said, aren't there any planes in Canada? <laughs> he wasn't going to let me get away with that. Yeah. So I went to my wife and I apologized. I said, I'm not going to be here for Thanksgiving. She said, why? We've got 50 people coming over. And you know, when she says it in that voice, mm -hmm. you know, she's not happy. And I said, dear, there's a doctor in Colorado Springs that says he can help me. That's when she did a 180 degree turn. And she well, said, I'll pack your bag, right? I'll pack your bags. I'll take you to the airport. What are you waiting for? <laughs> so yep. I got on a plane from Edmonton, to Denver, beautiful flight, two and a half hours. And then from Denver to Colorado Springs, which was a rinky dink puddle jumper. You ever been on a rinky dip puddle yes. jumper? Well, this one was pr pr really bad because the air comes off the desert in that part of the world and it causes eddies, which causes turbulence. So the plane would be flying along and then it'll drop a hundred feet without warning. And then it'll climb back up and drop 200 feet without warning. And then it'll 
climb another 100 feet and drop 300 feet without warning. It was like the drop of doom at Disneyland over and over and over again. So, Captain Jim, I got off the 15-minute flight. I was green. I crawled off the plane, and there was David on the tarmac to meet me. Now, the beautiful thing was, in those days, that was allowed. Now, it just doesn't happen that that way now. But, boy, it was beautiful back then. And I, I just was able to talk to him. And he said, Dr. Leica, I think history is repeating itself. I think I can make you better, too. Oh, that's so awesome. Um so we know that's the outcome because here you are. <laughs> so because I've only got about 15 or 20 minutes at the most. Um, so I want to jump forward now. So did you uh, right after that start transitioning away from your practice or in and write because you wrote the book, The Secrets to Living a Fantastic Life, which, by the way, Jack Canfield wrote the forward. So I'm a little jealous there. But so what was the time frame? From you know, it took a you couple of years. Better? We started writing it. I met a wonderful lady by the name of Harriet Tinka that convinced mm -hmm. me to write it. She was a world class wa model walking the cat ropes of New York. And she grew tired of it. She decided to go to university. But at university, she met a psychopath who ended up kidnapping her, stabbing her, and leaving oh, her for dead. So Harriet was in hospital. And she met a young girl who told her, you should be ashamed of yourself for being depressed. You should use your story to motivate others. And she knew I was running a competition called For Women of Distinction where women that were beautifully endowed and beautifully that had beautiful things. And she applied for one of the awards and she really wanted to meet me. And she said, Dr. Leica, we need to write a book together. So we wrote the secrets to living a fantastic life. And it's about the golden pearls we learned from our lives from they're the pearls of wisdom that everybody needs and captain jim do you know what forms a pearl um you you share because i don't want to sound more ignorant a than i might sound of <laughs> sand gets inside of an oyster ah, and okay. it irritates the oyster and it produces this luscious beautiful stone as a result of it and that stone is so beautiful and so great that it comes out and there are golden pearls in this this world, but they're so rare. They only exist in the South Pacific. Goodness gracious. The things so, you learn on podcast. <laughs> well, that's, but this is a beautiful metaphor for what people have. And everybody has these beautiful pearls inside themselves. They just haven't been able to, to bring them out yet. They haven't had them come to the surface. And you know, it's our greatest challenges that allow us these pearls to come to the surface. So if anybody is having challenges in their life right now, remember at the end of this is some beautiful pearls waiting for you, some beautiful changes in your life that can make your life wonderful. And so I transitioned. I walked away from medicine in 2019, but I continued to lead the pack in dermatology for all those years. I was able to stay at the heart of my profession and be able to help so many people. But I decided at that time that it was time. It was time to move away and help people in more ways than I was then. I want to ask you more about your book, but I, my a curiosity is now, did you go back to using a right-handed scalpel or did you stay lefty? I stayed the lefty. You know, oh, wow. lefties aren't all evil. You could do some amazing <laughs> things as a lefty. Yeah, you know, left-handed pitchers do some amazing things that right-handers can't. So That's a right. left-handed existence really helps you in a lot of ways. So um you and Harriet came up with these 13 golden pearls, which I'm sure probably started with a list of 50. You just brought so how did you whittle it down to the well, you know, top we 13? Decided, uh, we we ended up with 20 and then we went to a national publicity summit in new york where we went to all these people that were in the press and they said you know we love your book but you have too many pearls <laughs> so they said give us 13 of them and we'd be loved to have you on our show 
So we whittled them down some more. So guess what? We'll have another book come out in the next year or two with all those other pearls that we have because they're go. just as important as the ones we put in here. We just couldn't bring them out all at once. So can you tell me one or two of the 13 pearls? Sure. I'm going to tell you some of my favorite ones. Okay. And, and the first one I, I'd like to tell you about is love because love is one of the most important pearls that you could ever have because love is fundamental to everything that we do. There's love and there's fear and you should go to the love camp rather than the fear camp because love will always help you more than anything else. Very, very good. Now, you also write, I know in the book you write about enthusiasm. And that's um, one of my favorites. And let's yeah. talk about enthusiasm. I'll tell you a little story. It's a couple minutes long, Captain Jim. So I, I have at it. We got, we've got 10 minutes. You take cool. the world. Okay. So there was a carpenter and his name was Fred. And Fred had worked for the same company for 35 years, and he was done. He just couldn't go to work anymore. So he walked in one day on his boss and said, boss, I'm done. I can't work anymore. He threw his keys on the desk and said to the boss, I'm finished. The boss was taken aback. He said, Fred, you've been my number one employee for 35 years. What am I going to do without you? And then he thought for a minute and said, Fred, can you just do one more thing for me? Just one more. And I will uh, worship the ground you walk on. Fred said, of course, boss. I've loved this job. It's been my favorite job. And so he went to work and he built this last house for his boss. But his heart wasn't into it. He produced cruddy work for the first time in his life. It was disastrous. But somehow, at the end of it, a miracle happened, and it passed all the tests. It passed all the requirements for it to be a house. So he went back to his boss, threw the keys on the desk again, and said, I'm done. The boss said, hold it, Fred. We've been waiting for this day. We're going to have a little party. So they mm. popped the champagne. They had the caviar. Everybody in the office was there. And then the boss gathered everybody around and said, everybody, this is Fred's last day. I'm going to be mortified, but he's going to be the happiest guy on the planet. But Fred, I've got one parting gift for you. And that parting gift is the keys to the last house you ever built. Oh Take goodness. it and live in it with all the joy and enthusiasm you've given me all your life. Now, can you picture... If Fred brought his usual enthusiasm to that job, can you picture what that house would have been like instead of the crappy, crappy clapboard house that he put up? Now, this is why I tell this story, Captain Jim. Every day, the world's going to test you. Every day, you've got to bring it to the table. If you don't have the enthusiasm every minute of every day, you don't know when you're going to be cheating somebody or cheating yourself. Enthusiasm is what matters. Enthusiasm mm. is what makes the day. Take that enthusiasm and make it your number one calling card because that is the thing that will make the world a better place and make you a better person for it. I, it's a great answer. Now let's talk. So you went from your book, the secrets to living a fantastic life. And then when did you start your, do you call it a podcast or I know it's a syndicated radio well, show, you know, how to live started, a fantastic well, life. It started as a podcast. And, okay. And, you know, I decided to get this out there and my original plan was to go around the world speaking at the beginning of 2020. But mm. the world had a whole different idea than what I had. Yeah. The whole world shut down for two years. You know, planes weren't moving. Borders weren't open. Everything was closed. All the podiums around the world shut down for two years. And so I said, what am I going to do? I said, well, I can become, I, I've got a great voice. I really have a great story. I can interview great guests. I have a lot of friends. Let me get them on my podcast. Let them get me on my show. 
And I said, this is how I'll make it happen. So I started a podcast called How to Live a Fantastic Life. Within six months, it was so popular, a syndicated radio show picked me up and said, Dr. Laika, you got to be on my series. You got mm. to be on my show. And so I started on AM, FM 24-7, and it skyrocketed. Now we have 5 million listeners a month, and it keeps growing and growing and growing because of my guests, because of my enthusiasm, because of my positive message. And my number one message to everybody is it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. And if you can remember that over and over and over again, remember, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with what happens. Because life is going to throw curveballs at you all the time. Life is going to make it miserable for you. And you've got to understand that these curveballs are just challenges. And you can overcome them. And when you do, and, and a door closes, another door will open. Or multiple doors will open if you let mm. them. Did you did you always have this kind of outlook or was it the whole um, we now know is an incorrect diagnosis with ALS? Did, was that I mean, that's obviously a pivotal moment in your life. But did, did you always have this positive mindset? Before you know, that? I was always positive. I've always realized it. You know, when I went to become a dermatologist, there were very few positions. So I had to try over and over and over again. I applied to hundreds of schools and. I was in, I finally got a position at the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. Mm. But I remember when I was doing these applications, my mother-in-law saying, when are you going to give up this foolish dream? You're never going to make it along that path. And I said, just watch me. We're, and so we ended up going to Minnesota for three years and, and I became a dermatologist. You know, I wasn't supposed to go to med school. I came from very poor parents. My cousin laughed at me when I said I was going to be a doctor. I said, just watch me. I'm going to make it happen. And you know, if you have a dream, if you have a want, you find a way to make it happen. You know, there were very few positions in dermatology. I made it happen by being a sought after person. When I was in internal medicine, I used to write papers and Doctors that are in dermatology always write papers. So they saw that I could write. So they said, mm. geez, we'd love to have him as a student. He could write the papers for me. Nice. I have to ask you in our last three minutes. So I'm curious. So you started the podcast, then it was picked up by a syndicated radio show. Does the podcast still exist or? Do, or do yes. You, it's I, all what I do is I, I publish it as both. Every okay. week I publish two shows on my on my website. And that is a podcast. It goes across all the networks, but every week we have multiple radio shows, you know, so we have a lot more radio shows on AM FM 24 seven as well. So if people want to find me, they'll find them on all those media. I literally have, I produce 500 pieces of material each and every month. Good Lord. <laughs> so you, uh, my final question, you, you mentioned something there, which I know the smart marketers who, who um, listen to me and follow me and all and learn from me. You said, I, so I created a platform and I showed, which obviously makes me think of uh, our mutual mentor, Dan Kennedy, right? That's when we kind of figured out how we were traveling in the same circles. So w when did you discover Planet Dan? You know, I discovered Planet Dan early in my medical career. I, you know, when I was a dermatologist, uh, dermatology at, at that time was treating warts and acne and things like mm -hmm. that, even skin cancer. But, you know, I live in Canada and Canada goes going through a gazillion of its healthcare crises and they were deciding not to pay doctors what they were worth. So I said, well, I'm skilled. I'm just going to switch over to cosmetic surgery. But cosmetic surgery is a whole different game. So I was actually at Staples Bookstore and I picked up a book by Planet Dan, by, by Dan Kennedy. And he had a little bit of thing in there saying, can you, you can write me and uh, I will criticize your, your uh, material. Mm -hmm. And Dan wrote me back a month later and I said, 
yeah, it's not that good, he said. He said, but I'm running a mastermind club in, near my home in Akron, Ohio. Would you like to come down? He said, he said, I think you'll be good for it, and I think you'll learn a lot, and I think you can teach others. So I was a member of Dan Kennedy's mastermind for about five years. Uh, half the time he was in Akron, Ohio. The other half the time he was in Scottsdale. All right. So there were a whole bunch of us that were there. And Dan must have written in about 20 of his books about me. Oh, I read all about you. That's why when um when I saw your name come up, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Dr. Allen. What a what a treat and a joy to connect with you. I hope it's uh been a fun experience as as uh, having me on your show. <laughs> now we can both um Put that on our resume, so to speak. How do you want people to connect with you and, and um, get a copy of your book, listen to your show? What's a good sure. place to do that? Best thing to go to my website, Dr. Alan Leica. That's D R A L L E N, Leica, L Y C K A dot com. Be sure to look at my services. I am a coach. I don't have a lot of availability, but if you want that, you should check it out immediately and get in touch with my girl, Tammy. And also, I am a professional speaker. If you want me to get on your stage and make it shine, if you think I was good in this half hour, picture what I can do for your audience or your business by being in it and making your business or your life that much better. Uh, again, DrAllenLeica.com. My book is on Amazon. Best place to find it. How to Live a Fantastic Life. Uh, it's an international best-selling book, multiple award-winning book, and it will give you insights that you can't get anywhere else. Thank you so much. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful half hour, Dr. Allen. Thank you so much for joining us on Dream Business Radio. It's my pleasure, Jim. Hey, folks, that wraps up this very special interview with my guest, Dr. Alan Leica, and definitely want to connect with him at DrAllenLeica.com. You can connect with me if you choose to do that at GetJimPalmer.com, www.GetJimPalmer.com. Again, if you're interested in the Dream Business Mastermind, that's Dream Biz Coaching, Dream B-I-Z Coaching.com. I told you how you can get free copies of my books, part of my legacy building program. My six books are available for free in digital format at either aren't uh, Barnes and Noble at either Barnes and Noble, Amazon, or they're also on the iBook store. And I think that's it until this time next week. Another fantastic interview. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, and you take good care.